सीमा फोर्स आर एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट मल्टी थ्रेडिंग इन जावा सो लेट्स लर्न अबाउट द सेम वॉट आर सीमा फोर्स अ सीमा फोर इज अ सिंक्रोनाइजेशन मैकेनिज्म यूज टू कंट्रोल एक्सेस टू अ शेयर्ड रिसोर्स इन कंकरेंट प्रोग्रामिंग इट यूज इज काउंटर्स टू मैनेज द नंबर ऑफ अलाउड एक्सेस टू द रिसोर्सेज प्रिवेंटिंग रेस कंडीशन एंड इंश्योरिंग सेफ कंकरेंट ऑपरेशन सीमा फोर्स कैन बी बाइनरी और काउंटिंग it depends on the number of permitted access while i was learning this concept the terminology of semaphore used to confuse me a lot the word semaphore is not very intuitive and it does not reflect something which is common in our day to day uses so why do we name a particular concept as semaphore if you are in the similar situation let's learn what does this word mean the term semaphore comes from the signaling devices used in railway and maritime contexts to control traffic in programming it similarly signals and controls access to shared resources among concurrent processes essentially this term semaphore is not commonly used in everyday language among native english speakers it is primarily known in a specialized contexts like programming operating systems and historical references to signal devices in transportation so with having known the definition of the topic let's understand how is this semaphore used with some visualization imagine we are building an application which needs to connect to a third party service so this is our application and this is the third party service so this is the application and this is the third party service due to some constraints the third party service could be accessed only by a limited number of threads at a given point of a time so for example what it means is only three concurrent calls would be allowed to this third party service from our application so in order to implement such scenario we need to ensure that we have some sort of restriction in place in such situations we can think of making use of the semaphore to implement such restrictions for example assume that our application has 50 threads in thread pool however the third party service is going to allow only 3 threads so in that case we can think of using the semaphore now let's understand the concept of semaphore with this image let's start with an assumption that semaphore at the core of it is nothing but a permit mechanism the image shown has three boxes these three boxes are nothing but permits so at the moment this semaphore is going to allow three threads to be run so essentially if there is a thread that wants to execute it will ask the semaphore that hey i want to be executed so in that case semaphore will check that does it have any permit or not so if there is a permit that permit will be given to a thread so basically this permit is like a token and once a thread acquires it then it's going to do its processing so this is what we mean when we say that at this moment this semaphore is going to allow three threads to be run to begin with we have thread 1 which wants to execute so it calls acquire on the semaphore the acquire method is like it's requesting for a permit now that at the given instant we have three permits available the thread 1 is going to be allowed and it will execute and access the third party service so essentially thread 1 comes and it says hey i want one permit to be executed semaphore is like all right i have three permits here you take this one and you can proceed so once it's given you could imagine that this permit is no more so essentially you have two permits left and once this permit is assigned to thread 1 it goes ahead with its execution so thread 1 is essentially allowed to execute so once thread 1 has been given the permit semaphore will have two available permits and while thread 1 is executing and accessing the service let's say we have another threads which are thread 2 and thread 3 which come to semaphore asking for permits and at this moment the semaphore has two permits available so it will give the permits to thread 2 and thread 
and essentially after these permits are given to thread 2 and thread 3 they also go about with their execution so thread 1 starts with its execution and so does thread 2 and thread 3 after acquiring the permit now let's imagine at some point of time in future thread 4 comes into picture and it's going to the semaphore and say hey semaphore i want to execute and in that to happen i want to acquire the permit from you so at this moment semaphore is like all right that's fine that you want to get executed but i don't have a permit with me as of now so what you can do is you could wait and due to this thread 4 gets blocked so thread 4 had called the acquire method and it's going to get blocked on the acquire method and sometime in future when thread 1 is done with its execution it will say all right i am done with my execution now i am going to release the permit that i had acquired so the permit will be given back to the semaphore and as soon as that permit is given back to the semaphore the thread which was waiting for a permit in the semaphore will acquire it and proceed with its execution so let me revert back the image and now we have all the three permits available with the semaphore so at some point of time thread 4 got a chance to execute by acquiring the permit so this is the way in which semaphore works so let's understand what exactly is this release method well thread says hey semaphore i am done with my execution thus i'm returning back your token your permit that you gave me earlier and you could make use of it as per your wish so you could understand that semaphore permits are nothing but kind of reusable tokens in that sense so if you notice at any given point of time in this semaphore we can only have three threads executing at maximum and that is what semaphore is used for so essentially what we have done is we have restricted the count of threads which are going to access the third party service using a semaphore now that we have understood how exactly semaphore is working under the hood let's have some quick code demonstration which will showcase us how we can make use of the semaphore in our code so here i am in the ide i will create a new class for the demonstration but before i create the class let me tell you briefly what exactly i'm planning to build so i am planning to build a small use case where we will be making use of some third party service to scrape the data don't worry it's not going to be something difficult it's rather just a dummy kind of method the entire idea is to showcase how we can use the semaphore rather focusing on the scraping part of it so let's get started and i will create a class i'll call this as a scraper and let's have this main method to begin with and i will create the scrape service which is the service which will be called by the scraper class so just as a good practice i am going to make the scrape service as a singleton class not that it's needed for this demonstration but just as a good practice let's have it as a singleton and let's have this instance and uh, what we will be needing is a semaphore so let's initialize the semaphore it provides a constructor wherein we can pass some value so this semaphore is going to have three permits and we have a method that is called scrape what this scrape is going to do is it's going to run in a try catch block let's have this interrupted exception and this will throw a new runtime exception and we will also have a finally why we will look at it in some time so to begin with this thing is going to acquire the semaphore so it will call the dot acquire method on the semaphore and then we have a helper method which is something like invoke scrape bot so invoke script bot is the actual third party service invocation wherein we are going to call the third party service and uh, do the scripting task so 
we will implement this method in some time but for now let's have the signature here and imagine that uh, some thread has acquired the same of four permit and it got terminated due to some reason or maybe it went into a deadlock situation so what happens is the same of permit is acquired forever but we don't want that to happen right what we want essentially is that once a thread is done with its execution it should be releasing it so similar to the way in which we used to acquire and unlock the logs right we will be using the try and finally block and in the finally block we will say semaphore dot release idea is that in either case of success or failure the execution inside the finally block will take place and that is when we are going to release the semaphore so let's implement the invoke scrape bot method so it's private void invoke script bot and this is nothing this is just going to print some message so let's have the message as scraping data and to mimic some sort of uh, execution time we will have some sleep introduced in the code let's say this is for two seconds and since we have given thread dot sleep we need to handle the exception of interruption and the way we will do this is we will throw a runtime exception with the exception not the best way to do it this should do for the demonstration purposes so now let's go to the main method and try to make use of this so what i'll be doing is i'll be creating a new cached thread pool and using that cached thread pool i'll be submitting the tasks for the script service so let's do that so i'll be making use of the try with resources pattern so executor service service and executors dot new cached thread pool and uh, let's say i want to do this for 15 times and service dot execute new runnable and this will call the scrape service scrape So what we have done is we are creating uh, this service that is the new cached thread pool and we are supplying this runnable we are calling this script service method inside this runnable 15 times. So what we would expect is that at any given point of time only three threads are executing. So let's run this and see the output. So here is the output. We have a scraping data. Then we have a scraping data. Then we have a scraping data. Finally, we have a scraping data. So what is happening essentially is out of all the 15 times we have submitted the runnable, we are just allowing three threads to execute simultaneously. So scraping data is printed thrice. Scraping data is printed thrice and so on and so forth. So this is kind of demonstrating that using a semaphore, we are restricting how many threads can run at a given point of time. Please note that how many threads will be actually running at a given point of time will also depend on how many cores you have and all those things. But the whole idea is that if you use a semaphore and some sort of permit, then in the worst case possible at max only those many threads will be running at a given point of time and that is the whole intention and idea behind using the semaphore. So now that we have seen the code demonstration, let's learn a few more things about the semaphores. We also have a concept of multiple permits. Please note that we can acquire multiple permits at a time. For this, we have an overloaded method of acquire which allows us to enter the number of permits we want. So when we call semaphore.acquire, you can pass a value. So let's say semaphore.acquire and you pass a value of 2. So 2 permits out of 3 will be taken by the thread. However, we should always ensure that the number of permits we take should be equal to the number of permits we are returning back by calling the release. So 
like we had passed the number of permits in the acquire method we also need to pass the number of permits in the release method as well so if dot acquire is 2 dot release should also be 2 and uh, there are some other methods in semaphore as well let's learn about those the first one is try acquire so when this method is used the thread will try to acquire the permit if there is no permit available the thread won't be blocked rather it can do something else then we have try acquire with timeout which is essentially the same as try acquire except it accepts some sort of timeout the next one is the available permits and as the name suggests the available permits returns the number of available permits with a given semaphore the final one on our list is this new semaphore which accepts count and fairness well this is an overloaded constructor of the semaphore it accepts a fairness criteria which is a boolean value and when given as true the thread waiting the longest gets the chance to acquire the permit once it's available with the semaphore so that's all about the semaphore it's very easy and intuitive to understand essentially it's a mechanism to introduce a controlled bottleneck situation to ensure that there is an upper limit on how many threads can work on a shared resource at a given point of a time.